Good evening. Welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus broadcast. I'm Elder George Park Sr., your host pastor, coming from Christ Temple of Omaha. The church is presently located at the Center Mall, Suite 127, address 1941 South 42nd Street, here in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Our email is glparks1971 at gmail.com. Telephone number is 402-932-0880. Uh, call us for a prayer, ride, information, or if there's questions that you've had concerning of a previous broadcast or even of this broadcast. If there's some things that you didn't understand for us saying, please give us a call. We would love to share a word with you and clear up any questions that you may have. Our services are as follows. Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m., morning service 11 a.m., Sunday night 6 p.m., Bible class with me, midweek service is Wednesday night Bible class at 7 p.m. Please come and join us. Be a part of these services. You're welcome to do so. We have available for those who would love to study the Word of God in depth, the Search for Truth home Bible study. And so at this time, we thank the Lord again for being back on the air. We're grateful unto the Lord another Sunday morning that we have had, and now it's the evening time, and we see that some are getting ready for the next day, for Monday, and we thank God for all that he's done. We're grateful unto the Lord for our life, health, and our strength. Without him, we cannot make it. We have no hope other than in God. Amen. Everything else is just failing hope. You'll have it for a season, for a time. Then it will somehow let go and let you go. And so at this time, we're going to get into our broadcast for tonight. And again, we count it a very high privilege to be with you on the air, and we don't take it for granted. We pray that the Lord will say something in a broadcast that will encourage your heart, glory to God, that will let you know that everything is going to be all right. In these very uncertain times that we live in, we need to hear from God. Because he made heaven and earth, and he said everything was good and very good. So only God can give you that blessed re uh, uh, assurance to know that everything is going to be all right. At this time, we love to sing our blood song tonight. We have other songs that we sang that we uh, 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 come on the air with, and, and we're going to do it differently sometimes. But right now, we're still singing. And pray that if you enjoy the uh, songs of Zion, those songs that we used to sing in church years ago, sing along with us, hum along if you don't feel like you have the singing voice, but understand that we're able to make a joyful noise unto the Lord because he is our captain. He is our savior. He is the one that is the lover of our soul. Under the blood Thy precious blood under thy cleansing healing flood. Keep me, Savior, from day to day under thy precious blood. Yes, it's under the blood, thy precious blood under thy cleansing. Sing healing flood, keep me Savior from day to day. Under thy precious blood, yes, it's under the blood, thy precious blood, keep me under thy cleansing. Sing healing flood, keep me Savior from day to day. Under thy precious blood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord again for that song. It is a prayer. It is something that we desire. Lord, keep me, Savior, from day to day. Under your blood, your precious blood. Thinking about the children of Israel when they were in the land of Egypt. And the death angel passed through their land. And they had the blood over the doorposts. And that blood was just enough, hallelujah, more than enough. 
to keep that death angel out of that house, out of that home from that uh, firstborn of the people of God. And so we're singing today and we're believing God that that same blood that Jesus shed on Calvary is more than enough, hallelujah, to keep us from day to day under his precious, precious blood. Will you pray at this time? We believe in prayer. We believe in asking God for his help because without him, we're nothing. Amen. Will you pray? Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Again, for another day, for another time that we're able to call on your holy name. Lord God, you're so good and so kind to all of us. Lord God, you watch over us individually, but yet and still, Lord God, you watch over us as a city, as a people, in our neighborhoods. Lord God, you know of the danger that could come to each and every door. But, oh God, you're so sweet. Hallelujah. You're so kind that you won't let those things come nigh our dwelling. And we appreciate it, Lord God, and we're able to acknowledge you. It's not because we've been so watchful. It's not because of the cameras around our house. It's not because of all the things that we can think of that would protect us while we sleep, while we slumber. Oh, but it's your mighty power. And Lord God, we never want to forget you. Whether we're asleep or whether we're awoke, Lord, that you've been good to us. We pray, Lord God, tonight that you'll remember those that are sick. Somebody somewhere right now recently entered into the hospital. Lord God, even on a Sunday night, and they might even turn to this broadcast. They hear somebody praying for them. Lord God, touch their heart. Touch their body. Touch their minds. Lord God, everything needs healing from God. Hallelujah. Oh God, remember those nurses, those doctors around the beds of our loved ones. Oh God, guide every hand. Guide every instrument of healing in those hospitals. Have your way tonight. Remember those, Lord, that are just lonely, Lord, that they feel like everybody has left them, forsaken them. Lord God, you say you're the God that never leave us nor will forsake us. Oh God, remember those that are behind prison walls. Some way, somehow, give them a new day. Give them a new start. Hallelujah. Lord God, you're able, Lord, to make a difference in every life. Oh, God, bless, bless this broadcast. Bless those in the studio, Lord God, as we do this, Lord, because it's for you, not for me, not for anybody else, but that you might be glorified. Have your way tonight. Give us strength to do this, and we'll thank you. We'll praise you. In the sweet name of Jesus, amen and amen. Glory to God. Again, we're grateful unto the Lord for what he has done. I heard the saints sing a song years ago, I don't know what I would do without the Lord. They said, I don't know what I would do without the Lord. Every time I look around and see, you know the Lord has been good to me. I don't know what I would do without the Lord. I could ask you the question tonight, who's got your back? Hallelujah. Who's watching over you when you can't see it coming? Lord God, when they're talking about you, when they're making plans against you, who's watching out for you? Lord to God, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be tonight? Even as a country, as a people, do you look around? Do you see the trouble that we're having all around? I pray that somewhere, somehow, that somebody will get their mind towards heaven, get their eyes toward God. Not at people, don't look on people, but ask God to help us. Did you know that those who have titles and those who say, I'm preacher this and preacher that, prophet this and prophet that, but the Bible spoke of Jeremiah, which was the ninth prophet. He was a weeping prophet. If there ever was a time we need a weeping prophet, is right now. Glory to God. Wisdom is not in our land today. It's not in our country right now. I'm sorry. You don't find the wisdom of God. We were speaking last night in Bible class about the wisdom of God and how that Moses, when he came out of the land of Egypt, and how that uh, the mixed multitude was before Moses with problems and questions. Moses couldn't handle all those people that were coming at him. So his father-in-law, notice that family connection, 
recommended to him that he get some help. And there you'll find the 70 men in the Old Testament mentioned about the Sanhedrin council. But God said, bring them to the tabernacle. I'm going to put the spirit of Moses on those 70 men that they're able to come around with the same type of wisdom and understanding. I want you to take notice, as we mentioned in Bible class last night, about the oneness of God. There was no confusion that one said this and another one said that. This one said this and another one said that. That's what you're getting today when you hear people talking about the problems that face our country today. Where's the wisdom of God? Where's the understanding that only God can give? Only God can speak to the problem. And it says, peace, be still. Hallelujah. Notice when Jesus, he commanded that the uh, storm that the disciples and all of them were in, when he said, peace, be still. He didn't have to say, now clouds, move out the way. Sun, come back to shining. Waves, lay down. All of you all lay down. He didn't have to go through no details, but he just spoke with the wisdom and the power and the authority of God. He said, peace, be still. Wouldn't you like to see that today? Amen. God can do that because we find today in our society, this one's mad about this and this one's mad about that. And you can't solve everybody's problems. What am I saying? I'm saying that our program title is, let's talk about Jesus. Let's get back to the word of God. Let's ask God to help us because it's not within man to uh, direct his own steps. Glory to God. We're living in the last days. Hallelujah. We're living in a time. When people are getting so far away from the Almighty God. We mentioned before, there's only two types of people in the world. I don't care what color you are, what part of the world you live in. There are those that are getting closer to God, and there are those that are getting further away. Where are you tonight? Did you get close to him today? Was there something said to you to make you to pause and think how good God is, how mighty is he? Glory to God. How wonderful it would be to serve him, to know him more and more and more. Glory to God. He's worthy of your thought, of your time. He has the power to do all things. We'll go into our subject tonight. Glory to God. We pray that this is beneficial for you because I want to touch on some things that seems like we're going through in our society. Uh, reading the Bible tonight, hope you have a, ki a good King James Version Bible. We don't uh, recommend that you have a lot of commentaries. They'll get you into trouble. If you know what I mean, that those who understand and study God's Word, some feel like that you can read this book and read that book. But I tell you what, you need to settle in on one book and understand that one before you ever even try to do anything else. That's wisdom. Amen. 17th chapter of the book of Acts. It says in verse 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore, I, therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Verse 25, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth life to all and breath and all things. Verse 26, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him. Are you feeling for God tonight? Glory to God. And find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also as of our, your own poets have said, for we are, are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven by art and man's device. 
Verse 30, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. I'll stop right here for the time being. The unknown God, hallelujah. Paul was on Mars Hill. He noticed how that they had reverence to gods. It was a God day. It was a God celebration day. They didn't want to leave any God out. They had this God and that God. And they were glorifying each one and had a pause or had a word for each God. But then he came and saw the inscription where it says to the unknown God. It said, in case we have left a God out, in case there's somebody else waiting in the wings that we don't know who it is, let's make up something. Let's give him some kind of uh, 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 acknowledgement. The unknown God. And Paul said, Wherefore ye ignorantly worship him, him clare, uh, declare I unto you. And tonight we want to talk about the unknown God is beautiful. Glory to God. Have you thought about how beautiful the Lord is? How good it is to know something about the Lord. There are a lot of people today, they say they know God, they heard of God, they believe in God, but they don't like the things of God. They're troubled by what society says is acceptable and what is not acceptable when you're serving God. And I'm here tonight to let you know that there are uh, things in us. We're made in his image and his likeness. And those things that we have in us is not that beautiful. It don't look so good. And God can't use that. God wants to see you, the, uh, let you see the beauty in, our, in ourselves as well as in him. Glory to God. It's a two-way street that if you know that God is beautiful and he's beautiful in your life. I heard somebody say that there was a time that I was in the world, but he made something beautiful out of my life. Can you say that tonight? That your life has been made beautiful by the Lord. Glory to God. There are things in your life that you really cannot present to God. He won't have it. He won't accept it. It don't look good to you, your neighbor, your family, or those around you, what have you. What do I mean by that? Your anger. People get angry. They get their face all distorted and twisted. They're mad. They can't uh, hardly stand their own selves. They're talking so fast. They're spitting, seem like, you know, getting words out and, and what have you. And sometimes they'll let the profane words out as well. Do you think that's beautiful? You think God likes you when, he, when you're doing that? Do you think that you can prearrange the apology? They say, you know what? At the end of the day, God's going to forgive me for being mad and cussing and fussing. I used to ask the question, I said, now, if I slap you in the face, and then I say immediately, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to me. Why I just did that? I've been having a hard day, and I apologize. I am so sorry for slapping you in your face. And then you forgive me. You're kind enough to forgive me for what I've done. And a few minutes later in the conversation, pop, hit you again. Oh, I don't know what's going on. My hands just seem like it won't be still. I've hit you in the face again. And you say, okay, all right, I see where this is going. You keep popping me in my face. And so, but I'm kind enough now. I'm trying to keep my p composure. You may say this to someone. I'm going to forgive you, but you'll be watching out for that individual. Glory to God. And then after a while, they begin to talk. And the third time, pop, hit you upside your head. How many times are you going to take that? God is being dealt that same kind of blow, your anger, your sinful nature, time after time after time again. And sometimes we want to call it beautiful. You know, that's just me. It's in me. My grandpa, my grandma, we always had a hot temper, this, that, and the other. We make reasons and excuses for doing ugly things. Glory to God. And so God can't use your anger. Hallelujah. There are some people today, they live a lustful life. Not always a sexual thing. It's just they just desire things of other people. They see a person dressed nice, act nice, or what have you, uh, you know, good home life, and they desire that. They lust after it. It's more than just having a desire to, you know, have a good life yourself. You'll do whatever you can. That lust is not a good spirit to have. Glory to God. 
And then there is that lustful spirit of sex. And we speak about it in the Bible, the lasci lasciviousness. That is that spirit that causes somebody else to take off their clothes or do what it have you, and that changes the atmosphere. And next thing you know, we're thinking about something, a uh, 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 lower state uh, uh, feelings than we were before. Lasciviousness. It's rampant in the world. A lot of times people don't even mention that word in Scripture anymore. It's a sin. Most TV programs have a lasciviousness uh, 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 background, the motive of it. The commercials on the TV are that way, to incite the lust from people. You can't watch a game show program without some of the people being uh, not fully dressed, not fully clothed. But the spirit of lust is in the land today. You think that's a beautiful spirit? You think if you had a spouse and you found out that they had what you call rubbernecking, is that every time they see a, a young lady walking around with tight pants, I mean tight pants, or what have you, and they got to look at each and every one. Glory to God. Think that's beautiful? That they're not looking at the wife or the husband, you know, that they've married to. Their attention, their desire is to that one. But they're looking at each and everything. Glory to God. God can't use that. Not a good spirit. If nobody else told you I'm going to say that tonight, it's not a good spirit to be a lustful person. A lying spirit. You know, there are people that will lie at the drop of a hat. They don't care if they uh, get caught in the lie. They'll say it, and they have a chuckle. They'll have a little laugh because they told a lie, and you have to figure it out that they're not really serious, that they've lied in what they're saying. You think you're going to be able to stand before God, our almighty God, where he says he has truth and tell the lie, and God may laugh, some people feel like comedians are in heaven telling jokes. Glory to God. I'm taking my time tonight to uh, bring to you that the beautiful part of being uh, uh, with the Lord. You don't know it, but he's an unknown God. And to a lot of people today, they really don't know God. They put everything in their life and expect God to accept it the way it is. Hallelujah. That lying spirit. They laugh at so many lies. And sometimes they used to tell us when we were small, say, now when you tell one lie, you're going to have to tell another lie to cover that lie and tell another lie to cover that lie. Next thing you know, you don't know where the truth is. Amen. Amen. There's another spirit called hate. Oh, how many things or how many people do you really hate? How do you know that if you have the spirit of hate is when your disposition change, when they come around. And it may just be the color of their skin. You see them and you look at them. Oh, I can't stand those type of people. Maybe one of them done something bad to you years and years and years ago. But I tell you what, you never forgot it. You hate that individual and anybody who comes in your vicinity that's like that person. That's a bad way to live. Glory to God. Can you be at peace with God? Can you be happy living a life of hatred, of lying, of anger, of lust, of malice? Those feelings can't be beautiful. Glory to God. But we're talking about God being beautiful. We're talking about the things of God that when he changes your life, that he can make something beautiful out of your life. I see my time is running tonight. Glory to God. This will have to be part one and part two of this message. But we wanted to get this out because people have gotten to the place, and we're going to talk about this more, that the things of God is ugly for people. If you want to go to church, people are very, oh, I, I'm not into that, and, you know, that's soon, that's you, but I don't believe in doing that. I don't believe in singing them songs. You've been singing them songs for years and all that. I get nothing out of that. I go to sleep in church when the preacher is preaching, all that, you know. Only part I like is the choir because they jump up and down. They make me happy. Glory to God. And they're very much bored. Why am I saying that? It's because a lot of folks, they're very bored with church. They're very bored with God, said he loved him. And the only time you see them in the house of God 
is on New Year's or, or Christmas, Thanksgiving. Got Mother's Day coming up. There are those that know that mom should be seen with their family. I'm going to go to church with mom, take a mom out to dinner. But mom, I'll tell you what, I'll be back around again next Mother's Day. Or I'll be back around again with you for next Thanksgiving or the next holiday, Easter or whatever. You know, those holidays come up so fast. Some people, they're not ready to go to church because they don't like it. They're bored with church. It's distasteful to them. And I can understand is that there's so much confusion in the land today. I'm, my time is almost up on this broadcast. Some people, that's all they can do is talk about the dirt and the, and, and the problems of the ministry. They say, oh, this one's bad. That one's bad. This one's good. Why would you take up the time to say all of that? that how bad church is, and then you want people to come to your church, you're fooling yourself. Then again, you find those that are so deep into some foolishness about church until all they want to talk about is prophecy, about revelations. We ask the question in Bible class, saying, now, what, what difference would it make if uh, Daniel in the lion's den, whether that was a male lion or a female lion in the lion's den? Don't make sense, do it. And we asked the question, said, well, would it matter whether there was a, 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 a grass on the floor of Noah's Ark or was it a hardwood floor? You don't care about that. The Bible did not take its time to show you that, for you to get bogged down with that kind of uh, thinking. But the delivery of the Almighty God, glory, hallelujah, how he delivered Daniel, how he delivered Noah, hallelujah, was beautiful. You ought to be thanking God. When you read the word of God, hallelujah, and knowing that the Savior, the one who we speak of, is a beautiful God. Join us next week. We'll fill the rest. Uh, uh, we'll come with the rest of this broadcast about the unknown God is beautiful. Again, where Christ's temple of Omaha Church is located at the Center Mall, Suite 127, 1941, uh, South 42nd Street in the city of Omaha. Join us.